Hello everyone, and welcome to my review of the Black Lightning Eagle Charge Blade. Wow, what a name, that's a long name. This is the winner of the weapon design contest. We all kind of knew it was going to win. Do you guys remember that? It got all the likes. It's a very impressive looking weapon. Uh, actually, feathers come off of it when you use it. It's really cool. If you want to unlock this charge blade, you need to play the event quest Every Hunter's Dream 3. That means you definitely want to go collect it right away if that quest is available, because it's not always going to be available. Now, whenever I make these videos, I'm always kind of questioning why should you use the weapon that I'm suggesting or, or reviewing, and it's actually harder to tell with this weapon. So, usually I recommend the strongest weapon in the weapon class. That's usually the weapon that I spend time reviewing because, you know, reviewing weapons takes time and there's a lot of weapons in the game not worth reviewing. We're reviewing this one just because it looks good and just because it's available to players early. However, it's questionable if it's going to be the best charge blade for its class. So check it out. It's a power elemental charge blade, right? So the file type is power elemental file. That means that you're going to be building for elemental damage. What that really means is this is only useful against thunder monsters or monsters, I'm sorry, with a weakness to thunder. Uh, you wouldn't use it for general fights. What is she doing there? She's looking at us. You wouldn't use this for general fights. If you wanted a go-to charge blade, you're better off with the gold Raytheon charge blade. I have a review on that as well. That's an impact file charge blade, and it deals explosive damage with this files. Explosive damage are the you know, the artillery skill, boosts the damage on those, and they kind of ignore hit zones, so it doesn't really matter what the monster is weak to. In this case, we really want to be fighting monsters who are weak to thunder damage, and that's going to mean, right off the bat, you're going to use this charge blade for fewer fights. But here's the bigger problem. When we run up to the smithy here, and we go forge equipment, we're going to go to charge blade, and you compare this to the Zenoga Charge Blade, oh no. Turns out the Zenoga Charge Blade has 72 more attack. And what is it, about 120 more thunder damage. So that's actually a pretty steep drop off compared to Black Lightning Eagle. Black Lightning Eagle has some stuff going for it too. Gets 10% more affinity than uh, Dustbot's Thundergale. Really that's not a lot, it's not a big difference. But there is a very large difference in their sharpness. So Black Lightning, Black Lightning Eagle is going to have a large purple sharpness bar the whole time. And then after that, it's going to have a large white sharpness bar. Whereas Despot's Thundergale, you have to build for the purple sharpness, which you definitely aren't going to do. And then the white sharpness bar is actually pretty small. And after the white sharpness is gone, you've got a tiny blue sharpness bar. And as you know, the damage multiplier from white to blue is a big drop off in damage. So Despot's Thundergale has an issue with sharpness. The question is, how does it maintain its sharpness without Master's Touch? Well, really it wouldn't. I mean, you could build Handicraft on the Despot's Thundergale and that will help a little bit, but inevitably you're going to have to stop attacking and sharpen your weapon. When you stop attacking and when you sharpen your weapon, your damage drops off to zero, obviously, and especially if the monster interrupts your sharpen, now you're really losing a lot of damage. Black Lightning Eagle, on the other hand, similar to Despot's Thundergale, neither of these charge blades can uh, they can't afford to build Master's Touch because you're building either the Namiel armor set or you're building the Silver Rathalos armor set, and that's for your elemental damage, right? Well, Black Lightning Eagle, it doesn't matter because you have that large purple sharpness bar, you have the large white sharp, uh, sharpness bar. It's almost like using a Nergigante weapon. In fact, when we compare it to a Nergi weapon, take a look at that. So the sharpness on Black Lightning Eagle is actually, if you if you consider both the purple sharpness and the white sharpness as one solid sharpness bar, it's actually more sharpness than Ruinous Devastation. So the best way to think about this charge blade as is a charge blade with a really large uh, sharpness advantage over the other charge blades in its weapon class. That's the best way to think of it. So you're dealing less damage than Despot's Thundergale, but you're really not having to sharpen the weapon at all. And the question is, does that make it better? Does it break even? Or is it still worse than the Despot's Thundergale? That's the question. And I don't know, man. 72 attack and 120 thunders a lot. So it is actually pretty hard to tell. I will be interested to see what speedrunners do with this weapon. I'm not going to make any sort of claim that one is better than the other. I'm open-minded. I would suspect Despot's Thundergale will win here, but I know the, uh, Handicraft actually plays a pretty large role because you're going to be running that damage multiplier the whole time with the sharpness. The other problem is for a charge blade is the files aren't affected by like 
You know, they're not going to be affected by crit damage. Your melee attacks will be, but not the files themselves. So, yeah, it's just hard to say. It really is. It's a very close call. I'll be interested to see what speedrunners are doing with this weapon, but I mostly hear negative feedback, and I think it's because people just wanted to see this weapon sort of tower over the rest like we had with the Wyvern Ignition Impact Greatsword. All right, so with all that being said, I put a build together, Sierra saying bye. See you later, Sierra. I put a build together that I think makes the most sense for this weapon. Uh, it's a purple sharpness weapon with a lot of purple sharpness, so we went true crit element. We, we can build true crit up, critical element, we don't have to worry about master's touch, and we're going to be getting lots of crit damage on our melee attacks, and that's how I'm going to be using this weapon. I'm going to be focusing on my melee attacks and the savage axe. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the build officially. Run down to the box over here. Alright, set decoration. Okay. So, check it out. Shock charm in the charm slot, obviously. Garuga, Garuga Greaves in the leg slot, and then the rest is Silver Rathalos. Now, again, the other option you would have is the Nami L set, and the Nami L set with probably, like, the Damascus chest, I'm guessing. So that's your other option. And with the Nami L set, you'd be focusing more on the file side of the damage output rather than the melee side. But here we are. We've gone with the Silver Rathalos set setup because we're going to be focusing on our melee attacks, and we have Focus 2. If you can fit, you, probably what you could do if you want to focus three is drop the shield decoration. And then you can, here, let's bring that in. Where's my focus? Oh, man. <laughs> There's so many decorations these days, aren't there? Show me focus. Here it is. Let's see what our best options for focus are. Here's a health boost. We've already used that one. So here's a divine blessing. We'll pick up that one. So there's focus three if you don't care about guard up. Guard up is really useful when you have a monster who you can't actually block its attack. And a lot of monsters have those kinds of moves these days where you have to have the guard up skill in order to block it. Like Black Diablos, for example. They changed Black Diablos to have one of those moves. So yeah, uh, you can run with no guard up, but it just makes playing with it even trickier. Uh, you can see everything you would expect in a charge blade build here. But notice, Crit Eye, Crit Boost, Weakness Exploit, Focus, Capacity Boost, Guard, and True Critical Element. So really, on our build, we're getting both the damage from uh, the, the raw damage, and we're getting the damage from the elemental damage. That is the goal of the build. And we'll have to see how that plays out. I don't claim to be an expert with charge blades. Really, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just using my knowledge of the game, really. This is my knowledge of the game. And I think it's up to speedrunners to show us if this weapon is even worth, worth using. Because one of the things that I noticed with the speedrunners, when they had an opportunity to run elemental charge blades, they weren't. A lot of them would just run the gold Raytheon charge blade. Even on a monster that would be weak to an elemental damage type, you'd notice that they'd just go gold Raytheon. Uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead and give this a try. All right, and here we are, ready to fight Tigrix with our thunder damage charge blade. Oh, look at that. Right away, a mount. Wow, that's pretty easy for the mount. I tell you what, let's go ahead and bring him down with this mount. We'll do a little damage to him, and then we'll hopefully throw him into a wall. Maybe my cat will use Meow Cano. <laughs> nope, I got plenty of stamina. You can't stop me. All right, there's flinch number one. We got to get flinch number two. Oh, that was it. We just needed flinch number one, apparently. And he's down. Where are we going to land? Right next to his head? Let's get some damage on his head. Get the shield charged, probably. Alright, that's charged. Probably put on the rock steady next. Ah, he got me. Damn it. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, those roars, man. They can true combo some roars, man. Alright, let's get this done. Alright, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We've got a torch pause. We picked that up from camp. He is all over the place. I'm going to throw you into a wall, sir. This wall right here. Perfect. Tell you what, we're back here. Let's charge the sword up. Now the axe. Bring the sword back. Just guard it. 
<laughs> Wait, is that Rodobon? Oh god. Oh my god. It's gonna be awful. Keep that sword charged, probably. Alright, we're taking damage. Oh, oh, oh my god, we're just taking tons of damage. Alright, we'll go ahead and heal that up. <laughs> we need to soften his head, is what we need. Is he leaving? Can barely see what's going on. Tigrix is such a pain in the butt. Alright, let's soften his head real fast while we can, while we still have this rock steady mantle on. Because once it's gone, it's gone, you know? Alright, here's some Savage Axe mode. He's all mad. Alright, just recharge our files real fast. Oh, of course he got us. Alright, well let's get the Temporal Mantle going next. <laughs> Tigrix really is a butthole, isn't he? Look at him. He just runs, 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 charge, charge, charge. That still hit me. I can't believe that hit me, man. Quick, 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 quick. Uh, we're okay. We're safe. Temporal Mantle's on. <laughs> Alright, I think we'll attack him. God, he's gonna spin again. No? No spin. We're gonna attack him with the... Oh my god. Look, he just moves out of the way. You gotta be kidding me, man. Why does he go so far? It's so annoying. Look, you can't... You can barely attack him because he attacks you physically and then he just runs past you. Here we go. Well. Already our shield needs to be recharged, unfortunately. I'm just going to get to it. That's okay. Oh, that's not. <laughs> that hurts. Let's go ahead and take off the temporal mantle too now. Oh my god, I can't believe that landed even. This guy is the biggest pain. I gotta remember that right trigger brings out the shield, actually. It doesn't bring out the, um... Oh, it brings out the axe, not the shield. That's what I'm trying to say. I could have done an aid there. I just don't know if we're safe to do an aid. He's gonna roar. Give me that tail. <laughs> Where are you going? I guess we could do claw attacks, couldn't we? We don't really need to. That finishing attack is definitely going to soften this part. Let's go ahead and have a Mega Potion. We're going to heal up. We're still holding on to Purple Sharpness. Not a lot left, though, surprisingly. Is he asleep? Or was that the bugs? I think that was the bugs making that noise. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, there's Savage Axe. Oh. He's too much, man. Look at him. Oh, we just need the shield out. Honestly. Wait, where's he going? Where are you going? Oh, we cut the tail. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Oops. Go ahead and damage his head. Oops. Reflected. He didn't like that. Yeah, that hurts. What do we have? Do we have anything? He's exhausted now. This is really where you get your damage in on Tigrix. Because he eventually exhausts and then it's like... He's not so strong once he exhausts. Oh, he got me. <laughs> 
Is he mad? Can't be mad at me. We're just going to use up the rest of these files, and then we're going to go for charging the shield. Ouch. <laughs> Feels like it's a given that I'm going to get hit, because you're so prone when you have the, um... When you have the Savage Axe out, you're so prone. Well, that was bad too, actually. I tried to get a charge shot off and he backed up and smacked me. Oh, that's not what I was trying to do at all. It's a good thing that didn't work. Burr. Who's over here? Anyone? Come on. I'll protect my cat. <laughs> Jeez Louise. All right, we're gonna go for the shield charge right now. Let's see if this doesn't kill us. Ooh, he's after us now. Can't really guard point him. I can't like follow up on the guard point because I don't have the, the files charged. Look at him, he's so vicious. All right, we got away. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, 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 oh! We're so close to dying! Ah, oh, and he's on our cat. We're good. <laughs> That's exactly how... Oh my god. Freaking Tigrix, man. He he wins my vote as a third most annoying monster. Not Lunastra. Lunastra is fine. We didn't know how good we had it with Lunastra. That's the truth. Soften his face again. So we're down to white sharpness now. Oh, we're getting a turf war. I'll take it. I'll take it. Look at us. Look at our pitiful little rolls here. Ah, oh, we're tremored. Come on, dude. Tremor, tremor, roar. All day. You never see that. When people are speed running, you never see that part because they don't they don't accept the run if they get interrupted a bunch. You know what I mean? They just reset. They just reset. Alright, here we go. There's Fulger back there. We're gonna ignore all that crap over there. There were some things we could have gathered, but we're just gonna ignore it. How close do you think he is to death? Think he's close? I don't think he's close. Where do you run exactly? He's down here. We need a pod. He can be thrown into a wall. And I want to do it. I want to throw him into a wall. There's some slinger torches. That'll work. Alright, so we got rock steady back. Let's go ahead and grab our rock steady. Dude, this guy's such a pain. Boop. You're getting thrown into a wall. <laughs> That's happening. I forgot to transform it. Still learning that. See? There's quite a bit to learn. He's a limping. He's ready to be captured. Alright, so that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too impressive either, to be honest. But part of that might just be me. I I'm still learning Savage Axe Charge Blade. It's confusing. There's like these um, patterns you're supposed to be following, like attack patterns you're supposed to be following when you're attacking optimally. And I'm still learning that, I really am. Because it's I, my brain is so... Like, I have muscle memory for using Sage Spam, and it's hard to overwrite that muscle memory with, like, a new move, especially if it's complicated. And Savage Axe does feel complicated, you know? You're you're activating the Savage Axe, and then you're trying to use... Uh, what is it? I, I don't even know the names of all the moves, so it's hard for me to describe it. I know what I'm supposed to be trying to do, though. You're supposed to be moving into an aid. This brings your shield back up, and then you... Don't hurt me. <laughs> Hold on, let's capture him first. Once you've moved into the aid, you can reset your files, and then from the charging of the files, you can move right back into the axe mode. So it's kind of like, um, oh, we can't practice it. I can't show you. Darn, I can't show you anymore. I just lost all my charges. Well, that's okay. We can talk about it in another video. Maybe I'll make a charge blade guide eventually down the road when I'm actually more practiced with it. What did you guys think of that run? I thought it actually went all right. It just... I can't tell how strong it is because I don't know how good the Zenogar charge blade would have done. Okay, we're back in Celiana, and one of the things I wanted to mention about that fight we just had against Tigrix, I just thought about it. We managed to defeat him without sharpening once. So we went from purple sharpness to white sharpness, and then he was dead. So we never actually sharpened our weapon, and that was kind of what I was talking about. I was talking about how, with this weapon in particular, not only will you be getting a good damage multiplier over the course of the fight because of the purple and the white sharpness, 
you probably don't have to sharpen either. And that's kind of a big deal is why Master's Touch is so powerful. It's because Master's Touch makes it so that you don't have to sharpen because when you sharpen your weapon, you lose a ton of damage because your damage falls off to zero while you're sharpening. And if you get interrupted while sharpening, that's even worse. So it's a weapon you really don't have to sharpen with. And that's nice, especially for players who don't have any handicraft or they don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, we'll have to see what the arguments for it are. It is 72 behind in the attack value and 120 behind in the thunder attack, uh, yeah, uh, elemental attack value when it, you compare it to the Zenogre lightning uh, or thunder charge blade. Yeah, when you compare it, it is lower, but it is having a much larger handicraft. And we'll, we'll just have to see what comes out of it. There might be a, I don't know, there might be a point where having to sharpen your Zenogre charge blade becomes a big deal. Do you want to see that again? We'll look at it one more time and then we'll wrap this review up. Let's take one more look at that Zenogre charge blade. You, you just watched me use this one. And what we noticed is that we were just running out of white sharpness by the end of the fight. Check this out. So if that was the case for Black Lightning Eagle, which has a huge sharpness bar, what does that mean for Despot's Thundergale? It means you'll run through the white sharpness very quickly, you'll be stuck in blue sharpness, needing to resharpen re your weapon, and then you'll fall into green sharpness right away. And this means a pretty steep fall off at that point in your damage output because you're missing that good damage multiplier from your handicraft, or your, your sharpness, I should say. So they, they are different. The question, though, is does Black Lightning Eagle's huge purple sharpness bar and huge white sharpness bar make up for its much lower attack and much lower thunder damage. And that's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say, really. It's a cool looking weapon though. And, uh, you know, I expect people to probably want to play with it just because of how nice it looks. And if it turns out that it breaks even, I think this will be the charge blade of choice just because of how good it looks. All right. And that's my review of the Black Lightning Eagle charge blade. Right now, it is questionable if it is worth using if it breaks even, it's certainly one of the better looking charge blades in the game. If it falls under the meta, you could still use it just because you like the way it looks, but I, I don't personally recommend it at that point. And we're still waiting to find out what the speedrunners really do with it. That's what I'm most curious about, because uh, speedrunners typically really, really, really figure out what's working the best. All right. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.